Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Today, I'm setting out to find if a very low-end modern CPU can beat a mid-range laptop CPU from a decade and a half ago. Specifically, I'm seeing if the most popular CPU for Chromebooks, the Celeron N2840, and AMD's competitor, the A6-9220E, can beat the 2009 Core 2 Duo SU9600. These are all power-efficient chips meant for laptops. However, their market segments are pretty different. The Core 2 Duo was, of course, the mid-range chip in 2009 when this one launched. And these two chips, the AMD and the Celeron, are very low-end APUs. So, there's no better way to settle than running a Cinebench test. On such a low-end CPU, the actual configuration of the laptop won't matter all that much. However, I'll still say the specs. This laptop has 5GB of DDR3-1333. In this one, we also have 4GB of DDR3-1333. And over here, we have 4GB of DDR4. 1200, which is a really odd speed, but that's all the CPU can handle. The Latitude E4200 over here is actually the oldest with its 2009 Core 2 Duo SU9600. In the middle, our Latitude 3150 has a 2014 Celeron N2840 and the AMD a6 APU in this laptop released as late as 2017. As the benchmarks start to run, I'll talk more about, well, the specs of the CPUs. When it comes to raw clock speed, the AMD and the Core 2 Duo are actually the best match, with each having two cores, two threads clocked at 1.6 GHz. The Celeron has well, reasonably faster 2.17 GHz cores, but we'll see how it stacks up. I'll go ahead and hit run on all of these. And I've started the render test on all three laptops. Well, immediately the Core 2 Duo is off the line a lot faster, but while they're running, I'll talk a little more about the details of each CPU. Going from left to right here, the A6-9220E has 2 megabytes of L2 cache and 256K of L1 per core, which is actually quite reasonable. The Celeron in the middle falls a little short of that, with only 1 megabyte of level 2 cache and only 112 kilobytes of L1 per core. And the Core 2 Duo is actually the best when it comes to cache, with 3 megabytes of L2 and 128K of L1 per core. These are all 2-core, two 2-thread two CPUs, so no hyper-threading. When it comes to wattage, the Celeron chip clocks in at only 4.5 watts. The A6 clocks in slightly above at 6 watts, and the Core 2 Duo clocks in at just 10. Although 10 watts is almost the power of the AMD chip and the Celeron combined, 10 watts for a Penryn architecture Core 2 Duo is very impressive. As in, that's quite low. That higher TDP also means this is the only laptop that has a fan. The rest are passively cooled. I know it's not what we're really talking about here, but I want to take a minute to plug my video on the Latitude E4200 and also say that it's my favorite out of these three. It has the best build quality, the brightest screen, the most comfortable keyboard, uh, and although this actually has the best battery life, this is the most pleasant to use. And we'll see from the CPU test if I will absolutely recommend it over these other two. But currently, this is my favorite of uh, the three. I should also mention that I'm testing the laptops on battery instead of plugged in. Of course, testing them plugged in would give us an idea of the maximum possible performance one could get out of these CPUs. However, 
Testing the unplugged power profile is, in my opinion, a lot more important on a laptop because, let's be honest, these tiny little laptops, you're buying these for portability. So I don't feel like it's valuable to test the maximum performance of the CPU plugged in since you're going to be using them on battery most of the time. Well, we're about five minutes in and the Core 2 Duo is actually winning. It may look like the AMD is winning, but that's just because they have different resolution screens and Cinebench isn't perfectly scaling. The Core 2 Duo is actually the most complete, or at least the most close to finished with the image. So going off of that, I have a feeling the Core 2 Duo actually may win. The AMD chip, that said, is still a lot faster than the Celeron CPU, and that is to be expected seeing it's three years newer. And yes, I am running a multi-thread test because most applications, including what you would usually be doing on a small laptop, basically web browsing and spreadsheets, all those applications are multi-threaded. About 10 seconds ago, the Core 2 Duo finished victorious with 188 points. The AMD is indeed pretty close behind with only one row to go and the Celeron is very behind. So clearly the Core 2 Duo is the big winner. It's been, uh, actually it's been about 30 minutes. <laughs> so that's a little longer than I expected, but the fact that a 2009 mid-range slash low-end CPU can still demolish like two popular CPUs for Chromebooks says a lot about, you know, why you should buy an older laptop. It's just a better bang for the buck. And just be honest with me, which looks like a better keyboard, this or this? Yeah, that's what I thought. Also, I find it funny that this is like the most modern looking of the laptops. It has the thinnest bezels <laughs> and it's like, all sleek and nice looking and these just kind of look terrible. Anyway, let's wait a little longer and see what the scores of the other two laptops are since that is what we're comparing here. And our AMD A6 finishes with the 169 points. So it falls behind by 19 points behind the Core 2 Duo. And I bet that the Celeron is going to get maybe 150, like 146 to 150 is the range that I predict for it. And our Celeron finishes with 160 points. I was a bit off there. My prediction was 150. But clearly, the fact that a 2009 CPU beats this guy by even 18 Cinebench points, that's, uh, that's pretty unfortunate. So I guess that settles our debate. And that's actually in line with the tests that I ran last week. Let me get those pulled up so I can read them to you. The spreadsheets on my phone, you probably won't be able to see, but I ran Cinebench 2003 and Cinebench 2010, single and multi-thread, and both the Celeron and the AMD chip got destroyed by a Pentium 4 HT 631 and an Athlon 64 3200 Plus, which are both CPUs from 2006. And that's really embarrassing. The Core 2 Duo SU9600 beat both the Athlon, the Pentium, the A6, and the Celeron, or not both, all four but it in itself was defeated by the Pentium 4 HT 661. <laughs> so there's a lot of sadness among these laptops. <laughs> there's a lot of incompetency going on, but I just think it's so hilarious and just a great representation of what low-end laptops are like nowadays that a Core 2 Duo comes out victorious. That said, that's about all I have to say for this video. 
Thank you everyone so much for watching. And if you're interested more in the Latitude E4200, it has its own video on my channel. And I do highly recommend you check it out or perhaps even buy one for yourself as this little notebook holds up astoundingly well 15 years later. But that's it for this video. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you next time.